Next, a documentary report that asks the question, can Mighty Mouse save the day or at least Saturday morning for network television? Stay tuned as special business correspondent Paul Salmon describes the trials and tribulations of an eccentric cartoonist and a network programmer. I think Alvin has a crush on our teacher. It's Saturday morning kid vid, starring Alvin and the Chipmunks, Papa and the Smurfs, in short, animation for the masses. Well, so far, he seems to be smurfing along just fine. For years, all three networks have pursued the same corporate strategy here. Go for the most audience with the least common denominator. Cute, obvious, inoffensive television. It's exactly the same strategy that corporate America has perfected for the past 30 years. Build a mass audience with a formula product. It worked, and corporate America became rich and complacent. But American quality declined, and American companies stopped taking risks. Small wonder that foreigners moved into almost every market, including here on Saturday morning. Look at this, for example, the American TV version of the cartoon series Dennis the Menace. Oh my gosh, look who's on this wanted poster. It's Mr. Wilson. The real menace here may be to the art of original animation. And who takes much of the credit for this show? The Japanese. Just read the names. They can turn out rote cartoons far cheaper than Americans. Networks used to make money with formula cartoons like this, but now the market is flooded on cable, UHF, wherever you turn the dial. And the networks have to share their audience with cartoons even less redeeming than theirs. They've got us. What are we going to do? Attack! There is even a network strategy under discussion to replace KidVid on Saturday morning with adult fare, the talk show formula that accompanies breakfast the rest of the week. One network, however, CBS is trying a different business strategy. Investing in risky, elaborately produced programs, trying to recover the lost audience with audacity, appealing to both kids and adults. Pee Wee's Playhouse is a distinctly American, extremely expensive kids show, featuring quality techniques such as clay animation. CBS invested heavily and Pee Wee paid off. It was number one on Saturday morning after just a season, attracting kids and grown-ups alike. And so this past year, CBS built on its strategy for rescuing Saturday morning. The new Mighty Mouse may not look as audacious as Pee Wee's Playhouse, but it too has targeted an audience of all ages. Phew! These new W4 forms are no piece of cake, let me tell ya! The man behind the mouse is an odd duck. Eddie! Yeah. Bring in the guy. Ralph Bakshi and his writer-animators are hoping Mighty will be renewed after a first season of so-so ratings. The key meeting with CBS is just a few hours off. Why don't we do a show on Mighty Mouse at this point, right? Who's reading his reviews, right? Getting an agent and having all that whole thing come down, a real Hollywood scene. And then why don't we do something about a piece of gum? Let's turn it the Bakshi up. Bunch is discussing plots to pitch CBS for next season. You guys got any ideas on we gum? We can make him a character. Let's hear Call him uh, Billy Gumwise. He can live on somebody's <laughs> mouth. He's a piece of gum. He's got legs. He's got a big smile. He runs around. And you blow it up as a piece of bubble gum, like, you know, and it bursts. And what happens to the character? What's his attitude? Screams hideously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Pearl, safe and sound. <sighs> Honestly, Mighty Mouse, but I could have walked to work, you know. Now, CBS could easily slam the door on Mighty, costing one quarter of a million dollars per episode to produce. The redoubtable rodent is losing money for the network. So the business tension is between CBS nursing the long-term health of a new quality product, or has been more typical of American industry in recent years, simply focusing on today's bottom line, and since it doesn't look too good, putting Mighty to sleep. You have to admit, though, that given Bakshi's past, investing big in him would seem to be taking a real chance. I'll get it. God damn it. Bakshi's first film back in the 60s was Fritz the Cat an X-rated, drug-drenched feature whose juiciest scenes we still can't show you 20 years after they were made. Hey, Fritz the Cat, it's become the study of the year. When I went up against what people thought animation should be, when animation was only for children, since you know who, 
<laughs> you know, when it was only done a certain way, you know, just because I had an animated character enter Greenwich Village and start looking at chicks as opposed to rabbits, you know, you know, the, all hell bro broke loose. As Bakshi made clear in his autobiographical feature, Heavy Traffic, as a young cartoonist, he was committed to seamy realism, not exactly Saturday morning fair. Eat your breakfast, Michael, darling. But as network TV began to lose its audience, CBS decided to take a chance. First on Pee Wee Herman, then on Ralph Bakshi. Toned down, of course. In just three more hours, Bakshi's studio will find out how the network feels about its investment as season one comes to an end. What about Mighty Mouse becoming a star? You think that's too cliche reading his own reviews? How do we do that? Getting agents? Scrappy's writing reviews for him that he's reading at night, you know, and he thinks everybody still loves him and everybody really hates him. He's believing his stuff, he's right? It, yeah. Well, what do you think? Give me your first reaction. Um, blah. <laughs> okay. It doesn't sound as good as Billy Gumwog, man. It really sounds like I've seen this movie. Let's just scrap Mighty Mouse next year. It's the Billy Gumwog show. <laughs> <laughs> what do we scrap? Kill everybody off. Well, what, you, okay. what makes you think we're going to be on next year? I mean, you guys are you guys are reading your reviews, right? <laughs> Mighty Mouse has gotten rave reviews from those who care about quality kid vid. Peggy Sharon, head of Action for Children's Television in Cambridge, Massachusetts, is a real fan. You can tell that Mighty Mouse is a good program because as an adult, when you sit down to watch it, you want to watch it through to the end. When children's stuff is wonderful, it works for adults too. Mighty Mouse uses words. You can see that there's a writer in the show. It, um, it has a point to make uh, in the funny, slightly satiric, but not hard-edged satiric, a kind of soft satire. Uh, and, the, and the pictures are fun to look at. But Peggy Sharon's enthusiasm isn't enough. It's the ratings that count, and Mighty Mouse is third in his time slot. It looks bad for Mighty Mouse friends. He is taxing his muscles to the maximum now, stretching his arms to the limit. If Mighty Mouse isn't able to hold on for another season, Bakshi and his boys may join the ever-increasing crowd of animators looking for work. Work which is hard to come by in the American cartoon industry these days. Most of the jobs have migrated abroad, and many old guard studios are nearly deserted. Oh, of course we want to hear your joke. We're listening. Aren't we, Bravo? Nope. In fact, the only cartoon jobs in America not threatened are the American voices in the sound studio. Well, that sounds good and stupid to me. Well, the pablum of the past may no longer spell success, but will the financially strapped networks really invest in innovation? I'm having a meeting with Judy Price this afternoon to let her know when the new development is coming in. I'm going to throw the Billy Gumwatt story at her to let us know that we're still thinking about it. I'm trying to find out whether we're going to get picked up for next season. Judy Price is head of children's programming at CBS. Do you think that Judy's going to let us do what we, the kind of show that we want to do? Or is it going to be another one of these things where we're getting a lot of guidelines and suggestions yeah, and that so sort of paranoid. thing. She let us do the show we wanted to do. Why would it change? That's your paranoia running wild again. You don't have the ratings. Oh, yeah, the ratings. The CBS Corporation is losing money. Saturday morning kid vid could be a thing of the past. Bakshi's troops may be playing to the camera in mock despair, but the feeling is real. How much time and money can CBS afford to invest these days before it sees a payoff? Ralph, we thought you were our uncle. And so, finally, we're on the road with Ralph, heading for his meeting with CBS's children's chief, Judy Price. I ask how he feels. It's total helplessness. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Which is why I always hope she had the drink. I mean, it'd be nice if she had a drink. I, you know, I grew up some cigarettes off of her, and if I get that far with her, I'd call it a complete victory. <laughs> now, you're finally back from New York. How are you? I missed you. Come on in. A showbiz hello. Yeah between the bohemian artist and the bottom line executive. But each has won the other's respect. After all, in this age of the fast buck, Ralph knows that Judy Price may be the only hope for quality on Saturday morning. Did you bring your developments with you? Basically what I have is uh, the new projects, character designs and the story bible. They're pretty much complete. Bakshi's dream is to remake no, Saturday Morning, but first he has to keep Mighty alive. But it is the only show that stands a chance of renewal. It's based on the quality, and you've got to, though, now get the kids. Judy. Which means oh. a little softer and warmer. Warmer? Warmer. Warm. I want heart. Price is torn. I know. Between the comforts kids. of the old formula and the, the risks of a Saturday Ralph morning. Bakshi. Well, like, we'll try to deliver your kids if it doesn't to talk down to them and make it in, 
and turn into some sort of mush, but I don't think you want that either. No, right? no, I want quality, and I want quality that's going to be a hit. I mean, is that too much to ask? Because success is measured by how effective you are with an audience. You can have the best show in the world, and if it doesn't reach uh, or is effective with an audience, it's not a successful show. Wrong. Uh, true. Wrong. In fact, it's not clear who's right or wrong here. In the current short-term environment, CBS can't really afford to keep investing indefinitely in a show that hasn't yet found its audience, no matter how clever it is. But here comes Ralph to save the day by persuading Judy Price to buy Mighty Mouse for at least one more season. If you consistently strive for quality, you will eventually get all the success you need. I agree with you. That's, that's and that's what we did one season. Yes, quality does end up begatting success over time. If we went another If you make a good season, product, you're going to end up with it, you know, finding its, its audience. But let's face it, it often takes time to build an audience for quality programming, whether it's Mighty Mouse or even what became the most profitable show in TV history, 60 Minutes. And no matter how chummy Bakshi and Price become, it's unlikely CBS will ever give Mighty the years and years it took before 60 Minutes finally turned a profit. In this short-term world, Mighty's lucky to be getting a second season. Where is the Mouse of Steel? Only he can save us now. Mighty Mouse, don't let us down. You can always trust the sound. I will never let you down. Even the Mouse of Steel can face powers beyond his control. If he fails next fall, he's history. And in the long run, Network KidVid on Saturday morning might follow him down. Trump? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Now we'll see who's the champion. And who's the chump. Tyson versus Spinks once and for all. 